I'm delighted to be here uh, this morning. And as you heard from our dynamic and visionary mayor just a little while ago, Airport City Denver is coming. We've begun the journey to identify our plan for new opportunities and additional revenue generation at Denver International Airport. We intend to optimize the economic potential of this amazing aviation facility and vibrant economic asset while protecting all along our core mission as the fifth largest air commercial airport in the U.S. and the 11th busiest in the world. As Dr. Casarda says, airports, like cities, are never static. They are constantly evolving in form and function. Transportation hubs have always attracted development. Cities have grown from seaports, riverfronts, railroad depots, and along highway intersections. And today, some of the fastest development we see is found surrounding airports. Airports are powerful economic generators and catalysts for development. In Colorado, Denver International Airport currently pumps over $22 billion annually into the region. And in fact, we are the number one economic engine in the state of Colorado. And as the world gets smaller and time becomes even more precious to all of us, it's inevitable that growth will further intensify around airports. And at Denver International Airport, we plan to plan for it. You know, unfortunately, growth around airports historically has happened in a very organic and chaotic manner. We've all seen it. Unplanned development can strangle an airport's ability to grow, encapsulate it with non-compatible -com uses, and leave it limping along on undersized infrastructure. In fact, we've seen it happen here in Denver as chaotic, unplanned development encroached on Stapleton International Airport. And we reached the choke point between airport and city growth. But our story has a happy ending. It begins with our original airport, Stapleton, which was a dirt airfield built in 1929, far, far from what was then the city center of Denver. Fifty years later, as our city grew, so did our airport, and unplanned development, most of it residential, pushed up against every single inch of the property line and limited the future of Stapleton beyond repair. Having an airport just minutes from downtown had its advantages, but being close also meant we were landlocked. And by the end of the 1970s, any anticipated airport expansion was going to be complicated and costly beyond reason. Our convenient airport was just too close for comfort. And by the 1980s, Stapleton Airport had clearly reached its limits, and quite frankly, so had its neighbors. We faced problems common to every other landlocked major international airport, noise congestion, premium cost to grow, and unpredictable and unsustainable neighboring development. By the mid-1980s, a critical decision point was reached to build a new airport, and Denver and Colorado's visionary leadership, led by Denver Mayor Federico Pena and Colorado Governor Roy Romer, decided to stop tinkering with the old airport and start fresh. Denver International Airport was conceived, and this greenfield airfield enabled Denver to design and build a $5 billion state-of-the-art airport facility and airfield, which opened 17 years ago in 1995. We were built to be a major mid-continental hub, and we have fulfilled that destiny. Regional leaders knew that a new international airport built on the border would open up new economic opportunities, solve local airport congestion problems, grow Denver's importance in the national airspace network, and reposition the region's largest economic engine with room to grow. 
Smart planning in the late 1980s led to acquiring land and establishing a vision to serve us for years to come. The vast land, 53 square miles, or 137 square kilometers, enabled us to build the runways we need now and add the ones we need later, as we can grow to 12 runways total. And with the new airport came passenger traffic. We've seen a 20 million passengers annual increase in the last 17 years. Last year, we edged close to 53 million passengers, and we expect continued solid growth in 2012. At full build-out, we can serve over 100 million passengers annually. And as most U.S. airports are doing, we are seeking new revenue sources. We're dealing with the threat of reduced federal funding. We're finding ourselves competing with other airports, and we're looking for ways to keep the cost down to our carriers. And just as Denver's leaders imagined, our landmass has continued to allow us to grow efficiently and effectively. Expansion is relatively inexpensive, as we will see in our next runway, which will cost us a total of $350 million. That's probably a fourth of what it would cost at some major airports, because we have no land acquisition. We need to do no soundproofing, and there will be no extended environmental process. We can easily serve the transportation needs of the region for decades to come. And speaking of what's to come, it's time for us to plan for the next 50 to 60 years. From its ideal location to its wide open spaces to its overall design, this airport was designed to be an even greater economic generator. So we started with our core mission. Last year, we completed an FAA-approved aeronautical master plan. And in that, we set aside all the land that we're going to need to accommodate 100 million annual passengers. Out of our total 34,000 acres, we set aside 16,000 acres for our ultimate aeronautical build-out. Even after protecting that core mission, and setting aside another 8,700 acres for buffer, we still have 94,000 acres, or 38 square kilometers of land, available for development. Our focus is on the airport property itself, but we are planning in collaboration with adjacent property owners and neighboring jurisdictions, as the mayor told you earlier. We started this process by retaining MXD land strategists. They're a team of worldwide airport city development experience leaders. And they, they worked with our local business leaders to whittle down the broad regional economic clusters for this region to those appropriate at the airport. And they are bioscience, renewable energy, aviation and aerospace, logistics, industrial agriculture, and perishable foods. At the moment, we're planning. We're aligning ourselves with our neighbors, and we've started to build. The first step in our process to build Airport City Denver began with the South Terminal Redevelopment Program, on which we started construction last year. This $500 million program includes a 500-room, full-service Westin Hotel at the airport's front door, which will open in 2015. And it will sit atop our new commuter rail station, which will open in 2016. Both of these are directly adjacent to our existing terminal. This program will return immediate economic benefits to the airport and our community in the form of jobs for the region, tax revenues to the city, and non-aviation revenue for the airport, and a commuter connection to downtown for passengers and employees alike. Our rail trip will take 30 minutes from downtown Denver Union Station to Denver International Airport, with trains running every 15 minutes, and it will serve seven intermediate stops along the way. 
the commuter rail line and will bring the city and the airport closer together. And each of the seven intermediate stops will open up new development opportunities, both on airport property and off-site. These transit-oriented development locations and the associated potential are what Mayor Hancock calls the corridor of opportunity. So with regard to our planning effort, we intend to optimize utilization of the entire airport property under the following guiding principles. First and foremost, we will protect our core aeronautical function and its ability to grow to full capacity. We will plan for airport property development in collaboration with our neighbors to create a collective economic district. And we will work with all of our regional stakeholders to plan and develop efficient and timely infrastructure that will drive the highest and best use. It's what we are calling smart growth. We're bringing stakeholders into the process early to ensure that what happens inside the airport fence is in harmony with what our neighbors plan outside the fence. Smart growth is market driven. So let's visit our designated economic clusters in order we'll go clockwise starting on the west. The tech zone provides 1,700 acres in which we can expand our existing renewable energy initiatives while providing airside access. For those of you who don't know, we currently supply 6% of the total power needed at the airport using our three photovoltaic arrays. The tech zone will complement adjacent commerce city zoning by incorporating technology and research related tenants. The northern area of our property is over 3,000 acres and it will benefit by having large contiguous land configuration and water resources. However, it lacks ground transportation infrastructure. So at least for the short term, before the access is improved, we plan to utilize this area for industrial agriculture and perishable food storage. On the east, by anticipating the addition of a future eastern runway, we plan to leverage our infilled land of 1,300 acres for inside the fence opportunities. This unique opportunity should appeal to aerospace, military, and cargo operations. To the south, adjacent to our future runway, we have a logistics zone of 650 acres that will be set aside for cargo, food distribution, corporate aviation, and fixed base operations. The developments in this zone will benefit from ground transportation linkages to major arterial highways that radiate from all directions. Our gateway area of nearly 1,200 acres will eventually include three new commuter rail stations all on our property and will provide compatible transit-oriented development opportunities. We're actually now working with our adjacent landowners and municipalities to partner on all three station zones. We're trying to maximize the development potential of both their and our land holdings, create linkages to existing neighborhoods to promote ridership, collaborate with our regional transit district to optimize the station design and accessibility, and jointly identify creative financing mechanisms for development and infrastructure. The first transit neighborhood that will become a reality will be our most southern at 40th and Pena Boulevard, where in conjunction with our neighboring city of Aurora and adjacent landowner, we'll we are envisioning a true mixed-use concept with the potential of residential and a density that is impossible closer to our aeronautical functions to the north. And then I've saved the best for last, our beachfront property. This is east of Pena and E-470 and east of one of our intermediate commuter rail stations. This is our main street. It is our greatest opportunity thanks to terrific visibility and access. This is where you might have seen rental cars on the north side as you drove from the airport. Those are easily relocatable functions that ultimately could benefit from consolidation elsewhere. 
This is our most strategic and valuable land with 950 acres of net developable property. The expected development over the next 20 years at this prestigious address could include exhibition, office, training, hotel, commercial, recreation, and associated support facilities. This image shows just one of the possible development types, an airside business park. It would benefit from strong airside access and large land parcels. This is also likely to be one of our earliest development areas, and we invite you to our booth in the exhibit hall where you can learn more about this and the other district, districts within our plan. We also stood up a new website. It is airportcitydenver.com, and I invite you to visit it to fully explore our vision. So while today this is all just a concept, it is the next chapter of our airport's extraordinary history. It's a step closer to realization of the original dream for Denver International Airport. We have all the true key ingredients for an airport city and the core of an extraordinary regional aerotropolis. We are unmatched in the United States in this regard. We have lots of undeveloped land on and around our airport. We have a stellar mid-continental geographic location. We have a local market that is poised to grow and an optimistic civic and business community that continues time and time again to reinvest in the future of this region. And as you saw this morning, we have the political will. It's led by our tremendous visionary mayor, Michael B. Hancock. Development over the next 20 years will create 30,000 permanent jobs, 25,000 construction jobs. It'll generate over $300 million in tax revenue to the city and the region, and it will generate hundreds of millions of dollars annually in non-aviation revenue. Our airport was built on the foundation of a strong regional partnership, and Airport City Denver will be planned in the same way to achieve strategic and sustainable development on both sides of our fence. And we will do this while protecting our airport asset, preserving and protecting its aeronautical and operational integrity. And as we all know, growth will happen no matter what, but we're choosing to plan for it and to assure that it is competitive and sustainable. Smart growth is our mantra, and as you see, We've taken our first few smart steps. Thank you.